Understanding how to make primitive style traps out of natural material is a skill anyone interested in survival should learn how to do, and I feel it's even more important than learning how to hunt larger animals with bows and arrows, or spears, or atlatls, because these small primitive style traps are so effective and efficient at consistently catching you food, especially small animals such as mice, rats, squirrels, and rabbits. I've already shown you how to make several primitive style traps in different videos, including the Paiute Deadfall, the Figure 4 Deadfall, and the Spanish Windlass. But this is my new favorite primitive style trap. This is so effective and efficient and the trigger system is so light that it catches the animals almost every time that they enter the trap. And this is called the Mojave Scissor Trap. I've caught a rat last night in this and this was an instant kill. This Mojave uh, trap works by making a pair of scissors that crushes the neck as it's pulled up and uh, this rat died instantly. I'm going to show you the components of how to make this trap, give you a little history on it, and then we're going to show you how it works with real rats. So stay tuned if you want to learn this important survival skill. I'm out here in the woods and have already collected the material we need to make this trap. You can collect all the material for this trap right out of the forest. You don't need to bring anything with you. Um, you need to make some cordage though. I got some natural plant fiber cordage here. This is made out of dog bane. You can make them out of stinging nettle fibers, cedar bark. There's a lot of different plants that will work, milkweed. Um, you'll need some sticks, a little larger than the diameter of a pencil based on what animals you're going to catch. This will be for the size of a rat. You'd make it smaller for a mouse or larger for a rabbit. And then I have some obsidian flakes here, some uh, sharp pieces of stone to carve all of this, uh, this trap component. So you could use a pocket knife if you have it, and if you have some rope, use that instead of cordage. But everything here we've collected from nature. We're going to start by making our scissors, which is in the shape of a V. And I'm going to take these two sticks and I start carving them. I'm going to do a, an angle at the bottom here and here so that they line up and uh, cut them to length. And let's do that now. That sharp obsidian cuts just as well as any pocket knife. Works really well for this trap. And here's about the angle we're looking for at the base of this V, just so that they fit together like that. Uh, that will be perfect. Now we need to cut these sticks about right there. You can start by even just breaking them off. Just like that. That'll be perfect. About that long. We'll do that with the other one. We're now ready to wrap the bottom of the scissor trap uh, using this cordage here. You don't want to tie it so tight uh, that it won't open and close so there's a little bit of space here. You don't want that space too big that the animal can get its head out of if it gets caught and there's a big gap there. So we'll leave a little bit of space and wrap this in a figure eight style like this. You see how that works there? That should secure it in place. I also like to wrap uh, the center of this uh, together just to really secure it. That forms a nice hinge there. We'll tie off the, the cordage. This is pretty simple to make here. This is what's going to close on the animal at the base. And now we need to tie uh, the two pieces of cordage at the top. This side's going to have a piece of cordage tied with one loop in the string and this one's going to be anchored to this and then come over and go through the loop. I'll tie those up now and then show you what it looks like. So in no time at all, we have the basic components of our scissor trap. This will open and close, and it's secured on this side, going through that loop here. So when this string is pulled, the scissor trap closes very tightly and very fast. And this is the fulcrum down here. The most force and energy is at the base, and that's where the animal's head will be. So where my finger is is where that animal's head will be. As it pulls, it will close and lift, and uh, it really secures it. So you don't need that heavy of a spring pull to actually make this trap work. The only component left on this trap is we need to tie the uh, trigger component on the end of this, a little toggle that will set off the trap when it's disturbed. And uh, this length of string doesn't really matter because in the middle it's going to be tied to the spring pole. So we just make a little uh, toggle at the end and I'll show you what that looks like. Here's that toggle tied to the other end of our scissor trap line. All it is is a, a flat piece of wood and that will work as our trigger mechanism. A very nice thing about this trap system is you can sit around a fire and very easily make a bunch of these scissor traps. And uh, when you're done, you just sit there and wrap these uh, string around with your toggle at the end. And now you can transport that. You can make these uh, in large bundles and carry them around and set the traps as needed. And we know that Native Americans did this because they found in several areas large caches of these exact style scissor traps. 
uh, dozens and dozens of, of them together, which means Native Americans had trap lines where they would keep these traps and go around and set them up. So this is a Native American style trap that was very effective and used extensively in the Mojave Desert. Now that we have our scissor trap bundle made, uh, we're ready to go set this trap. All you need left is a spring pole, which is just any branch that will bend over and put tension on the trap. And uh, below it, you're gonna make a, a little frame. And you do that by getting two sticks that are thick enough to be sturdy enough to hold the trap, but also flexible enough here that you can make two hoops. And uh, we're gonna cut these off and shove these into the ground. I'll do that now and then show you what it looks like. Now that we have our two little bent sticks shoved into the ground where they're really secure, we're ready to install our scissor. And you just put the scissor there, you open it up, and uh, put it right between the frame. And uh, we'll tie this end here to the spring pole that pulls this whole trap up. And we'll put the trigger back here. And as the animal comes through, we'll have to block off over here. And in the back real well, they'll come through here with their head or their body through this trap. And as it pulls up, it will catch, close, and can't go up because of this frame. So I'll get this trap completely set and then show you how it works. The final component of this trap is to build the support that will hold our toggle trigger system. All that is is two sticks shoved into the ground with a cross piece tied on. And then you will put your toggle trigger here and the string will be pulled up by that uh, spring pole. And you secure it around right at that uh, cross piece and you can put this toggle here like this with a trigger stick below it and that will keep the trap from going up but as soon as that trigger stick that holds this end of the toggle is released it pulls up like this and all I mean by a trigger stick is just a simple stick here that goes from the ground at the base of the hoop and angles up to the end of our toggle uh, trigger system and this trigger stick here will have bait tied right in the middle of it and uh, as there's tension from the spring pole pulling it up it hinges right here on this cross piece and then comes down and the end of the trigger toggle is held up by this bait stick. So as the animal comes through the hoop and through our scissor trap, we'll take the bait right on here and this uh, will be released. It's a very light trigger system. It's one of the most consistent. I haven't had too many times where the animals come in, taken the bait and gotten away without setting it off. This is a hair trigger and a perfect system for catching animals. To set this trap, I've tied the scissor components and the toggle right here at the end of our spring pole. This is just a springy tree here. And you pull this down and that provides the energy and the force for lifting up this trap and killing that animal. So what you do is you put your end of your scissor here in between your two hoops. You pull this down until your toggle system is under that cross piece and that's what holds everything in place. You then put your trigger system here, the little trigger stick, one end at the base of the ground and the other at the end of the toggle. And this is uh, holding in place now. You can pull these two scissors apart. These are loose, but when this is released, they'll go up. These will pull tight and close the whole system. You are gonna need to close this back end so that uh, animals don't approach from the back to work. The animal will have to approach through this V. So let's set this trap off. What happens is the animal comes along here, comes through with his body or his head in that V, and uh, feeds on the bait stick, the trigger stick here. And as it pushes off, the whole trigger system goes up and it secures this. It lifts it up very quickly and uh, snaps the neck there or captures it and holds it in place between these two loops. It's very effective. I'll do a close up so you can see just how this works. I'll reset it now. Just place the end of your toggle right there for your trigger. And as you can see, it wants to come right up. It's got some force on it, uh, but you just go down, secure it on that cross piece. Find a good balance point and put your trigger stick right below there. Now that's secure. Whenever this is disturbed, it will release this. It'll go up and uh, that spring pole will lift everything up. This is all loose, but you just pull it apart here. I uh, want to make sure it's not tangled so that will go right up when the animal's in there. And now that's the body gripping trap right there. It's a great system and it's so effective. Let's show you how it works from a close-up angle. So the animal will come through here with its body in between these two sticks. It will disrupt that uh, trigger system in the back and it's caught. That is very secure and it will hold it in place. Now it's one thing to show you how to make this with sticks, but I'm going to show you in real life scenario how rats are caught in this trap. It's incredibly effective, one of the most effective traps I've ever used. And we'll go to some trail camera footage of actual rats being caught in this trap.
As you can see, this Mojave scissor trap performed perfectly. Either side of the scissor stick closed off right behind the head and must have broken that neck instantly. This rat felt no pain. I'll release the tension now and uh, take the rat out of the trap. One of the reasons I like this trap so much better than the Paiute deadfall is that it killed it by breaking the neck. See right there, it got all smashed and uh, broken. Uh, its head's even pretty loose here from having that broken neck. The Paiute deadfall works by crushing the whole body with a rock. And chances are that those intestines can burst and cause the digestive juices and feces to get on the meat, uh, tainting the meat and causing it to rot and be inedible. So this trap is great because the whole body is preserved and we can now cook this rat up and eat it. I've already posted a video on how to cook and eat rat on an open fire. I'll put the link to that video in the description below. But uh, if you want to see how to cook and eat a rat like this, stay tuned on that video. And uh, this has a lot of fleas, so I'm going to stop touching it. But these rats are great food. They've been used by Native American people, these wood rats here. And uh, same with squirrels and rabbits. And it's really important to learn how to secure this food in a survival situation.